It is a pleasure and an honor for, you, for me to be with you today, particularly because you are all representing our region, the ASEAN region. Over the last 24 years, since I made the speech at the Shwedagum Bogoda that Dr. Timothy Ong so kindly mentioned, it has always been my intention that we should move closer to our neighbors. This was always a vision of my father. Way back in 1947, before he died, he thought of a united Asian confederation, if you like. He went as far as that. He wanted the Asian countries to come together and to stand together to face the problems of the modern world. The modern world of 1947, of course, is not the modern world of 2012. Times have changed, we have changed, the region has changed. But I think the need for greater harmony, the need for greater cooperation, and the need for peace will never change as long as this world lasts. I've been asked to speak on resilience in a turbulent time. First, I would like to look at what exactly we mean by turbulence. What are turbulent times? Turbulence, by this definition, means lack of tranquility. It means agitation, it means clashes, it means con conflict, it means movements that are not in a positive direction. But yet, you can look at turbulence as interaction as well. Perhaps not the calmest kind of interaction, but interaction of a kind. So it is up to us to make the best of turbulence, to draw lessons from turbulence that will help us to achieve our goals of harmony, of peace, of progress, of prosperity, of cooperation, of a world where we create unity out of diversity. Diversity is very precious. It is precious to me personally, and it is precious to our nation because we are a nation made up of many peoples. We are a nation made up of many ethnic nationalities, and I'm proud of this. I'm proud of our diversity. I'm glad to say that we are a nation of many peoples. But I would be prouder if we could say that we are a nation united, a united nation, a union of many peoples. We have yet to be able to make such a declaration proudly and confidently. And we have to move towards that goal where we can all say, we are a union of many different peoples. There is turbulence in our country now. There has been turbulence in the past. The nature of turbulence changes. When I first entered politics in 1988, I entered it as one of those working for democracy and human rights. Because I believe in the value of human rights and democratic institutions. It was not because I wished to take anybody's part in particular. I, was, I would not even like to look upon myself as a champion of the people. I would simply like to see myself as somebody who believes in basic human rights and democratic institutions and who will try her best to promote these in my own country. When we started out on the broad road to democracy, it was turbulent in the sense that we had to face many dangers, we had to face many challenges. The government of that time was not particularly interested in granting human rights or democratic rights to the peoples, and we had to fight for those rights. And that was where, where the turbulence was created, the clash between the authorities and those who wished to promote human rights and democracy. And where did the great number of people in our country stand? Where were they in this pattern of turbulence? The great majority of them wanted their basic rights, but they did not even realize that what they were wanting were basic human rights. They simply understood that they wanted to be secure. They wanted to be free from want and fear. But 
they did not know that freedom from want and fear were basic to the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So part of our work was to teach them that their desires were legitimate, that their very simple wants, their very simple uh, aspirations were not only right, but supported by the great and wise of the world. That after the Second World War, those in power, those in positions to think and to try to find answers had come to the conclusion that freedom from want and fear and respect for human dignity were essential if our world is to be free from turbulence. A world that had recently then suffered the great turbulence of the Second World War. So our task then was to teach our people that their aspirations were legitimate and that they had to work for them. Throughout, my message has been no hope without endeavor. If you want to realize your hopes, you have to work for them. And that's where resilience came in. Resilience is more than mere endurance. Resilience denotes recovery, the ability to recover. So that means an endeavor on your part, a conscious effort that you will overcome the challenges that you will have to face, that you will be able to meet these challenges not only with courage and endurance, but with intelligence. Recovery needs intelligence. If we look at the simple case of a sick person, for somebody who is ill, so for somebody who is dis, uh, suffering from a disease to recover, there has to be resilience on his part in the sense that he has to be committed to recovery. He has to want to recover. He has to want to get better. But then he also needs the help of trained doctors to help him to recover. And that's where intelligence and education comes in. So resilience is not just a matter of endurance. Endurance, I think, of a, a great rock, uh, which is attacked by waves, crashing waves. And the rock endures and endures and endures. But the rock does not recover. It gets eaten away slowly, although the, it can endure for a long time. It can last for a long time. But the waves will eat it away, will wear it away over the years. Resilience means you do not get worn away, that there is recovery. You do not just give in, stand, stand up to as much uh, as you can possibly stand up to and generally uh, and gradually get worn away. That is endurance. But resilience is more proactive. You recover. You get back what has been lost, not perhaps in exactly the same way, but from different directions and in different ways, and with intelligence resilience, you get back more than you have lost. This is what I would like for our country. We went through a very turbulent time when our people lost their basic rights. But more than the loss of their rights, what saddened me was the loss of their confidence in themselves their pride in their country, their hope. As I like to say about young people now who are unemployed, it's not joblessness that I am worried about, it's hopelessness. Not having jobs alone is not a big problem, but if they lose hope, it's going to be a big problem for us in the future. In this way, when I was thinking about the loss of basic rights for our people, about the loss of basic security, I was worried that they would no longer be able to face the future with confidence, that their resilience would have got worn away. And our job, I saw, our, the, the, the work of all those who wanted to establish democratic values and institutions in this country, was to re-establish 
this confidence, to make our people regain confidence in themselves.